Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Okay, so in the previous video we finished the correct answer cell and now we need to finish the wrong answer cell. Mm -hmm. And we're almost there. We just need the wrong answer label. Exactly. Let's say A2. Yes. So we need to somehow give this wrong answer to our model. Right. Here in the setup, we would have something like this wrong answer. Let's say wrong. Forget the comma. This is it for our setup. Let's add the property. Wrong answer. It's going to be a string. So in our factory method here, we can add the wrong answer as a string. And this is interesting now. Do we always have a wrong answer? No. So I'm going to just give it a nil. Which of course means that this guy is going to be also an optional. I can say wrong answer equals wrong answer. Let me just build this. Yeah, the label. I can go to the wrong answer cell. I can drag this label to my class. Call this wrong answer label. Yes. And let's run the test. Failing test. Yeah, because we have the wrong answer label text. We have not set the label text here. Command U. And voila. We are done. We are done. Well, the behavior we want is there. Now we need some refactory. Let me just get rid of this. Yes, we don't need that anymore. Do you want to drive for the refactorings? Sure. I don't think this dummy answer makes sense anymore. We could probably give this a default value. False. And now we have just make answer values are default. And we have two properties that say if it's wrong. We have a boolean and we also have an optional string. Maybe we could say if there is a wrong answer, right. it is wrong. Yeah, that's very interesting. And we can get rid of this incorrect. And we should probably get rid of it here as well. And in here, in the wrong answer configuration test, we are giving a wrong answer. If there is a wrong answer, you present a different type of cell. Yeah. Here we should say wrong answer. If wrong answer is nil, we show the correct answer cell. Yep. We can also move this code here. Extract. And let's call this wrong. Now we return wrong answer cell for answer. That's a bit better. Let me run the tests. And they all pass. So I can get rid of this. And I don't like these hard coded values. We could use some frameworks to get like constant values, but I don't want to have dependencies in this project. So we could just do some refactoring and keep this pattern of having the class name as right. a res identifier. And we have tests. If we mess up something, we're going to have a crash in the test. Right. So we can create some helpers for registering cells. And in here, let's have an extension on a table view. Let's create a helper for registering cells. And we're going to give it a type. Okay. In this case, is the class type. As long as the class type is the same as the user identifier. Yes. It's just a refactoring. Mm -hmm. We have enough tests covering all those cases. We're not changing behavior. So we need a type, actually, a subtype of a cell. Something like that, I think it would work. So we can get a class name. I think it's describing. I believe so. Yes. Now we can call this method here. The same as we are doing in code, but now more generic. So the class name is the result in fire and the nib name. Mm -hmm. And since we're doing TDD, we can guarantee that. Let's see what happens if we pass the class in here and in here. Okay, we need to get the type of the subtype. Yep. Okay. So we can probably now get rid of these by following the same pattern. And we can have a function that's going to dequeue reusable cell for type. So we need to have a generic type, t.type, that mm -hmm. returns okay. a type. I think it needs to be optional. And it's probably the same here. Mm -hmm. Now we can return. Oh, but this returns a table view cell. And we want to guarantee a type here. Type. Optional, I think, also. 
Yes, because okay. you cannot guarantee it's going to get it at the right time. That's fine. Since we're returning an optional, there is no problem here. When we invoke the queue reusable cell, we can just pass the type we want. And we don't need to give it a type anymore, but we need to force it. Maybe we don't need for then. Mm -hmm. I think we can just use an underscore. Do the same here. Well, I don't know how to get rid of these banks in a nice way. And we have tests to cover that, so let's see. Yeah, the test pass. And if something goes wrong with those registrations, let's say I forgot to register this, I'm going to have a fading test. Yeah. See? Okay. So we can undo that, run the test again, and it's all good. But I don't want this in this file. Yeah, we need to move some stuff around because we also have the cells there. Okay, let's create a file for our table view extension. UI table view extension. Let's import your kit. And we just move our code here and everything should still pass. Yes, it does. We need to move this to its own file as well. This is going to live in a presentation layer. Right. Let's have this in presentable answer. And let's move this there. We could also move the cells. Let's do it. Answer cell. Okay, we run the test again, see if we didn't break anything. Okay, so the view controller code now is very small. I don't see anything to refactor here. Okay, let's see it on the screen. If I remember correctly, correct answer had a green color. Yes. So we can do this here. Mm -hmm. The wrong answer is a red color. Right. And let's leave it default for the question label. And in the correct answer, I just have the green color. That's it. That's it. I can create my result. You got one out of two correct. And we have a presentable answer. And the question is going to be question and the answer. And it has no wrong answer. It means we got it correct. Another question. Okay. And we need to put this in the screen. Let's create our window again. And window dot root view controller equals our view controller. And self dot window equals window. And make key and visible. That should do it. Let's run it. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. It's there, but... This is what happens when <laughs> you, you don't do the layout. <laughs> Let's make these stick to the bounds of the super view. Okay. And our header label. Let's put this back in place. Let's make this 44 center and I think that's it single selection no selection okay let's run it and we need to configure the cells also it is a bit better I cannot select cells that's good let's fix those cells now should probably use the layout now you can embed them in a stack view true I think there's an easy way to do this if we go to editor embedding stack view and is my stack view pinned correctly to the super view? I doubt that. I need the leading and the trailing and the top and the bottom. And I want to remove the hard coded values that I got here. Let's give it eight. I think it's minus eight. I think zero gets the default. Let's put zero. Okay, we got our constraints. What is this? Okay. Let's do the same for a wrong cell. Let's embed it in a stack view. And let's lay out our stack view correctly. Leading, 
trailing top and bottom. Let's remove the hard coded values. Those are correct. Okay, something weird in here. Let's fix that. I think we can make the cell a little smaller also. Yes, or under. Okay, that's 90 in height. And this one is probably, let's say, 80 or 60. Okay, 70 is fine. Okay, we can change our view controller to make the table view row height use the automatic dimension. That should do it. Okay, that's a little bit better, but this automatic dimension is not working because we need a delegate. And we can add this in the nib. Let's make the file owner the delegate. I think it's something I estimated. Hide for row. Yes. Did you get the answer? Well, it's a correct answer. We said it's 70. Mm -hmm. Else, return 90. Just an estimated. Auto layout's gonna get the real height for us. So I think we can do this in yeah. one line. Use the ternary there. Okay, so we can have a return 70, 90, like this. Yes. Ugh. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay, there it is. The results page. That's pretty much it, mm -hmm. isn't it? Maybe if we have long questions, we're gonna have problem. Like question, 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 question. And a long answer as well. Yeah. Yeah, you see? So we need to give a number of lines to zero, I think. Yes. And okay. that's easy to do. We just do it here. Can even select more than one. Okay. Go X go. <laughs> Let's run this again. I think that's fine for now. Yeah? That's not gonna even be the final version, but we are done with the results page and the question. So we're done with the UI. Basically. Yeah. At least what we had in the prototype. Yes. We could add some tests to guarantee that the colors are correct, that but the number of lines is zero as well. I think it's fine for now. Just saying that we can. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I think that's it for this tomato. So we're done with the UI now, and we have created already all the business logic in the flow. So what we're missing basically are all the middlemen classes and responsibilities, like the router and the presenter. Yes, and we're gonna get there. Yeah. Eventually. Eventually. But it's nice how we create these two things that don't even know about each other. So it means that we could have done this in parallel. You could have been writing the UI, and I could be working on the flow and the game score. Yeah, it just proves that things can be done in parallel, independently, and deployed independently, definitely. and tested independently. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Good job. On to the next one.